Shalom, Shalom, beloved. Welcome to Morning Dew, our daily devotional time with the Lord. Our daily devotional time with the Lord. Today we're going to look at Mark chapter 5, the verse 5. And the subject for our meditation is demons help people to destroy themselves. They help you, yeah, you, to destroy yourself. In Mark 5 verse 5, the Bible says, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones the madman of gadara beloved fully under the influence of satan cut himself with stones he systematically destroyed himself with stones. This is a very uh, important manifestation of the presence of Satan. Self-destruction. Huh. Do you know somebody? Do you know somebody? Have you seen anybody in the habit of self-destruction. There are many satanic and demonic uh, diseases that are self-destructive. Diseases like asthma are uh, overreaction of the body to foreign bodies which result in self-destruction. The body kills itself slowly as it tries to protect itself from these foreign bodies. Now, unforgiveness is one of such demonic footholds. Unforgiveness. Many do not understand that bitterness is self-destructive. By keeping the hurts and the pain, many people destroy themselves. And the pitiful thing is that demons encourage us to bear grudges and to avenge all who hurt us. God will forgive every sin we commit. But he will not forgive us when we do not forgive others. Many Christians and non-Christians are not aware that by maintaining a grudge, we are slowly destroying ourselves. There is nothing more self-destructive than bitterness and hurts. I want you to know that. And as a pastor, I've watched many self-destruct as they keep grudges and as they keep hurts. So many years down the line, they have plans to deal with somebody. If you look at the great empires of this world, you will see that they have rarely been destroyed from the outside. The collapse of these great empires always came from within. It always came from within. Bitter wrangling, inner fightings, and political divisions were always behind the collapse of these great empires of the world. The story of the fifth column, and some of us may be well acquainted with this story. There was an army general who 
surrounded a large city with the aim of conquering this city. This city was heavily fortified with a high and imposing wall and gates. The army general surrounded the city in readiness to attack it. One friend of this general came along and asked him, Sir, how are you going to overcome the defense of this city? No one, I mean, in recent history has been able to conquer this great city. The army general smiled and he said, It's my fifth column. Dear pastor, listen carefully. Dear shepherd, dear leader, it's my fifth column. I'm depending on them to do the trick. The general's friend was very interested and asked, what is this fifth column? I thought you only had four columns. The army general replied, I do have a fifth column. Oh, I see. Is it a special uh, command unit, commando unit, or are they airborne paratroopers? Huh? No, it's none of these. My fifth column consists of my spies, agents, friends, and supporters. People who show me solidarity, they are already within this city. You just wait. They will open those big gates from within and my armies will rush in. Destroying the church from within. The church cannot be destroyed by an outside force. It will only be destroyed from within. You see, the deception is that many people think that they are helping God as they accuse pastors, as they fight pastors. Look at it. There's somebody in your church and the person is a spy, an agent, a friend and a supporter of those that are standing outside the walls of your church with the intent to destroy the church. The fifth column, they are within the church. They are there to give updates. They are there to create cracks. They are there to engineer divisions. They are there to ensure that those that want the destruction of the church have what it takes to destroy the church. The accuser of the brethren edges these people on. They are in the midst of the brethren and they are anointed from hell to destroy the church. You should hear them talk about pastors. You should hear their comments, satanic tongues and satanic mouths surrounding and within the church. They generate much confusion and division within the church, thinking they are doing the work of God. That's why one day in John 16, the verse 2, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. If you read Romans 16, the verse 17, Paul says, now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. The doctrine of peace we have learned. There are some people, they cause divisions, they cause offenses contrary to 
the doctrine we have learned. Loyalty, the doctrine we have learned, they are contrary, they cause divisions, they cause offenses, contrary to what doctrine we have learned. So Paul says, mark them and avoid them. Beloved, self-destruction, distraction from within, is one of the key strategies of demonic attacks. When the spirit of Satan takes hold of a person, he will often begin to cut himself with stones. So you see, they are within and they're destroying themselves. You look at the prodigal son, and the prodigal son is a typical story of someone with a self-destructive spirit. He had everything going for him. He dwells safely in his father's house. By one decision, he destroyed himself. He destroyed his future. No external force contributed to his demise. It was self-afflicted. He virtually cut himself with stones. I want you to know, child of God, that God raises up fathers and gives them sons. Sometimes the spirit of Satan possesses the sons and they go very far from their fathers. When all is now said and done, the prodigal son are all but destroyed. When all is said and done, they end up destroying themselves. This is an evil that I have seen under the sun and it is common among pastors. It is common in the church. May God save us from the spirit that makes us put a knife to our own throats. May that not be your portion, beloved. Father, we pray against all forms of self-destructive spirits Spirits that causes us to embark on journeys of destruction. Today, in the name of Jesus, we bind and we take authority over every spirit that wants to use ourselves, our own minds, our own hearts, our own souls for our own distractions. We rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we shall not be destroyed by our own hands. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Beloved, I hope you've been blessed by this meditation. Why don't you share it? Why don't you subscribe? Why don't you press that notification button? The Lord bless you. We'll come your way once again with morning dew. Shalom. Baraka. Amen.